A couple months ago, I made a how to dress like a Simone Rasha model video and you guys loved it. I loved making it. So many people wanted it to be a series, including me. And I am so excited to be bringing you another installment with another designer who I am just absolutely enamored with. Minju Kim. Once again, we're gonna get into who is Minju Kim, what defines her design style, and how can we make outfits emulating her collections out of our normal people wardrobes. Let's get started. First off, who is Minju Kim. Basic facts, she is a 36-year-old fashion designer from South Korea. She originally wanted to go to art school and be a cartoonist. Her fashion sketches actually look quite cartoony, which I really love. It's very refreshing. But her parents encouraged her to study fashion design in Seoul, which she did, and then she got her master's degree at Antwerp. She also won Netflix's Next in Fashion in 2020, which I did watch in entirety in preparation for this video. It was really fun. I loved it. Would recommend. She has also designed for numerous k-pop groups including bts i feel like that's the biggest imaginable flex she describes her brand as her diary and an expression of her emotions in her daily life and she said in an interview that people think her work is fairy tale like and she thinks it's because her work is her fairy tale which is so cute okay i have more background to share as we go but now it is time to move on to what defines minju kim's design style We are going to start with silhouette. And the first thing I want to talk about is the sizing. One of the first things I noticed in Minju Kim's work is everything seems oversized. Not like it doesn't fit, it clearly does, but it's pretty much always like a wide, baggy, flowy silhouette. The actual shape itself is most commonly a baby doll cut or like a straight cut. The waist is very rarely defined. There's very often like a drop waist or no waist at all. And she does a lot of dresses, most of which are either mini or like a long midi, almost maxi length. She does also do some pants and shorts, which are pretty much always like a straight baggy wide leg cut. Minju has said in interviews that she always has comfort in mind when designing, and I think these super wide comfy silhouettes definitely accomplish that. This long, looser fitting, wide silhouette is also very standard in traditional Korean attire. And she says a lot of people point that out in her work that they notice that resemblance between her work and Henbok, if I'm saying that right. She also definitely tends towards specific types of sleeves and necklines. Sleeves are usually either poofy or just like a clean, straight, simple cut. And necklines are almost always like a high neck and often have a collar. Her silhouettes do tend to also have some more like ruffled or frilly or poofy elements added, especially around the waist. I feel like sort of voluminous ruffles or frills at the hips are sort of signature to her across different collections. Next up, we have patterns and graphic motifs. Pattern is definitely a core component of Minju Kim's design style. She often has a few distinct patterns featured in each collection, and they definitely tend towards a bold, high contrast graphic look. Like I mentioned earlier, Minju was originally interested in fine art, and specifically credits designer and college professor of hers, Walter Van Burendonk. I'm so sorry, there's no way I said that right. This, this man. She credits him with waking her up as a designer, as she put it, and teaching her how to combine fine art with fashion design. She typically makes concept art that is more like in a fine art style before designing an actual collection, and the concept art often ends up used as a pattern for the clothing. The art and patterns themselves feature a lot of flowers and animals, and just generally very like whimsical, almost folk art type motifs, which I think definitely plays into the fairy tale vibe. People People see in her work. Beyond all that, for other visual motifs, she also uses a lot of solid colors, color blocking, and contrast stitching. I feel like just any high contrast visual motifs are really a big part of her work. Alright, next we are moving on to color. I would say Minju's use of color varies quite a lot, especially compared to the last designer I researched, Simone Rasha queen of black and white only, but the colors I do see pop up the most over and over again across numerous collections are blue, green, super light pale blush pink, and red. Orange and yellow have also showed up a few times, and colors 
up here in both like super bold high saturation tones and soft muted pastels. She also uses black and white quite often and even other neutrals sometimes. And sometimes the look will be all black, all white, all neutral. Really no color is off limits for Minju Kim. She kind of uses them however she wants to create a bold, impactful yet whimsical look. What I will say is that she definitely does stick to like a specific color palette within a collection. It's just, it varies a lot across the collections. And in general, there are many like very distinct differences between the individual collections. She said before that for each collection, she'll like find a topic that she's really into, an idea that she can like research for months and not get bored of. And that will kind of be like the theme of that collection. And topics have ranged from like superheroes to the idea of what like a garden and space might look like to, as she says, female knight characters that protect us from nightmares. All so like whimsical and imaginative and delightful and also all super different. So it makes sense that there's such a difference between collections. She doesn't have like one motif that she's constantly trying to work into her work, you know? Next, we have materials. Minju has said that they actually make all their fabrics for the label in-house. So I'm sure they're like very specific and particular choices way more specific than whatever I'm able to like observe by looking at them. But from what I can see, on the heavier end, we have quilted and brocade fabrics that really feel sort of like warm and protective and just like rich and kind of luscious, you know? like comforting. Do all those words make sense together? I don't know. You get it, I hope. There's also a handful of metallic fabrics across various collections, one of which is a metallic brocade, which is another element of her design that appears in traditional clothing. On the lighter end, she also uses silky materials and things like ribbon and light floaty fabric like tulle or chiffon for accents. There's also a lot of fabric that I don't know how to describe because to me, it's just, I'm just like, that's just a standard everyday fabric. Cotton, I guess. Linen, I don't know. You get, you can see it. Fabric is definitely a weak point of mine um, when it comes to fashion, as you can tell. As far as styling goes, she tends to keep it super simple. There's really no jewelry. Every once in a while, there will be like a simple big earring, but that's pretty much it. She does seem to have like a certain hairstyle to go with each collection. Nothing too out there. It'll just be like braids or a bun or leaving the hair down. But with every collection, all the looks have a matching hairstyle. In some of her earlier collections, she did like a bold graphic makeup, similar to what I'm rocking today. And she also had more like hair or head accessories. But more recently, she seems to definitely go for just like a very clean, simple, natural look. The styling area with the most variation is probably shoes. The more classic types like Mary Jane's, Oxford's, loafers, or little ankle boots are definitely like the most common, but she's done pretty much everything from like clogs to jelly sandals to sneakers to heels and they vary from black to white to metallic to colorful what can i say she does it all finally before we move on to the outfits i would like to discuss some adjacent aesthetic trends that I see in her work. The first one is so big and broad, I don't even really know if it can be categorized as like an aesthetic, but that is K-fashion or Korean fashion. Obviously, there is no one way that all Korean people dress, but there is a bit of a K-fashion movement that references certain styles that tend to come from Korean fashion brands, Minju Kim being one of them. I guess from what I have observed, Korean fashion brands seem to tend towards simple, clean garments and silhouettes, usually a more modest look in that it's looser and more coverage, and often some more playful, youthful element. And all of those qualities are definitely present in Minju Kim's work. Okay, our next aesthetic that is definitely present in Minju Kim's work is Twi. I know Twi is controversial. A lot of people hate it because of like the shitty fast fashion versions of it that we all remember from the 2010s. But basically, it's just like 60s inspired fashion that is particularly cutesy and girly. And I can get behind that. The ruffles, the fun, kooky, bold graphics and colors, the big collars, they're all giving me Twi in a good way. Like Twi done right. Next, we have another style that is really too big to be considered like an aesthetic trend 
trend, but Minju's design is definitely 60s inspired. Obviously, I already mentioned that with the twee aesthetic, but even aside from the more twee-ish elements, there is still a lot of 60s energy going on in her work. The collars, straight silhouettes, baby doll mini dresses, and bold, colorful graphic patterns all fit right in with 1960s fashion. Finally, our last aesthetic is actually a subsection of 60s fashion, um, but I needed to call it out specifically because it is so present. It is space age fashion. I feel like space age is basically just 60s fashion, but like everything is silver or metallic, and there's just a lot of little accents that look spaceshipy or astronauty like a lot of white and like bubble shapes, you know? This is really the most present in her collection, Pluto 999. I mean, the name and the photos say it all. That's clearly what she was going for. Moon Garden also has some similar stuff going on, but a bit more colorful. And there are also some space and planet motifs sprinkled into the Spring We Lost collection. All right, so to summarize, Minju Kim is a Korean designer with a penchant for big loose garments and oversized silhouettes, bold patterns and colors, a balance of clean lines and shapes with more frilly, ruffly accents, and a generally very playful, whimsical vibe. With that, finally, it is time for the outfits, which, by the way, features a Minju Kim inspired garment that I made myself for this video. I'm very proud of it. Obviously, I'm saving it for last, but I can't wait to show you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, for our first outfit, I wanted to channel some of the flowy, summery, pastel type looks, and I was particularly drawing from the Spring Summer 2021 collection. I started with this thrifted pale green pajama house coat because the silhouette is actually kind of amazingly spot on for Minju Kim. Then I layered this silky vintage night top over to add in the pale pink and a little more frilly feminine details with the ruffles, ties, and floral design. Finally, I added this bright blue button up underneath to add in that blue detail from that spring collection and also add in a collar and a bit more structure to this very pajama heavy look. I also decided to do my hair like the model for that 2021 collection just to really commit to the inspo and for shoes I just went with my white platform sandals which do also appear in her work. Because this look is quite unconventional, I think it's pretty fun and statement making but it's also so simple and so comfortable. I mean it's almost entirely pajamas. All right, next up, we are going in a sort of opposite direction, emulating her more tailored looks and super bold colors and patterns. To start, I kept with the blue button up, but this time it paired with other very saturated cool tone pieces like these wide leg floral pants I recently thrifted. I wasn't even thinking of this video when I got them, but it's actually a very Minju Kim pattern. I love it. Then I paired it with a structured oversized blazer and on camera, the blue does get sort of lost, but I promise you it is blue and gray, so just fill it in in your mind and make it match. Finally, I added this little red neck ribbon. It's literally a piece of safety pinned craft ribbon, but I think it's a pretty good replication of those little crisscross bow ties she often uses. Oh, I also tried to do my hair like the model in that collection with like little spiky buns. I don't know if it works, but I tried. All right, now we're pivoting again to a more flowy, sort of fairy tale esque neutral look, which is primarily inspired by the fall winter 2020 collection Night of Night. To start, I am pairing this vintage nightgown with this long puffy sleeve blouse to have both a flowy white dress and long puffy sleeves. I also just tucked the collar inside of the shirt for this one for a high neck look without a collar. Then on top, I added this quilted vest for that blankety quilty element, and I'm actually wearing it inside out so the shinier side of the fabric is showing to get that sort of shimmery, metallic, almost armor-like look, which is a feature I really love in that 2020 collection. I also tied the straps around the back instead of in a bow in the front because it gives more flair to the hips and I just didn't think a big bow in the front really went with the look I was going for. Finally, I added my black boots and of course did my hair in braids to match my inspo. And now, honestly, I do feel like a fairy tale girl knight ready to protect an enchanted forest. 
All right, for this next look, we're returning to bold graphics and colors, and this one is especially inspired by the spring-summer 2017 collection, Cats and Girls. First, I pulled out this bold graphic floral patterned mini skirt, which I think is another total Minju Kim pattern. It's pretty perfect. Then on top, we have another kind of perfectly Minju Kim piece, this vintage button-up that was embroidered for me by my lovely friend Kathleen over at Kathleen Illustrated. I mean, the bunnies, the flowers, the general mystical motifs, what could be more fitting? This collection also features some flats with little lace-up ribbons around the ankles, so perfect opportunity for me to employ my favorite styling trick of ballet flat shoes with ribbons tied around my feet. And I thought this would be a perfect time to incorporate a graphic makeup look, so I just copied a very simple recreation of the campaign look from that spring 2017 collection, which I thought was cute enough that, as you saw, I also wore it for the talking portion of this video. Okay, this next look is another one inspired mainly by the Fall Winter 2020 collection, Night of Night, one of my favorite collections, if you can't tell. I started with this flowy green tank top, which I thought had kind of the perfect silhouette to emulate Minju Kim's work with the wide flowy shape, ruffle at the hips, and the high neck with the little tie. Then under that, I added my sheer black dress to get that floaty sheer element, some puffy sleeves, and another layer of ruffles. Then on the bottom, we have a black midi skirt, black ankle boots, and because she often features fun matching tall socks, some green socks to match the top. Finally, I also added this jacket for another boxy oversized blazer look and because I love this sort of terracotta color that appears across her work. This styling also kind of reminds me of how Doja Cat styled her Minju Kim outfit, so that's just a fun bonus. Okay, finally, for our last look, it is time for the grand reveal of my DIY Minju Kim inspired dress. Thank you, thank you so much. These wide, structured baby doll dresses are one of the most signature Minju Kim items. They appear in basically every collection, so this is my little take on it. It's certainly not an exact recreation of anything, but I think it fits the vibe well, and I really love it. It also works out great that I had this metallic fabric on hand. Shout out to my aunt for giving me her spare fabric, so I could also get a metallic look in here. For the actual styling, I paired it with this oversized collar shirt because oversized collars are also frequent in Minju's work, and then added the little red crisscross necktie again for some color. Finally, I topped it all off with the white boots to lean into the 60s space age vibe of the dress, and I also did a slick down bun inspired by the hairstyling from the spring summer 2020 collection. By the way, if you're wondering how I made this dress, the process will be featured in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. All right, y'all, that concludes our journey into the world of Minju Kim. I would absolutely love to know your thoughts on her work, your thoughts on my outfits, how did I do, which look was your favorite. I would also like to know what other designers you would like to see me cover. I have a lot of questions for you guys, so you better answer them in the comments. Just kidding, you don't have to if you don't have an aunt, but I really wanna know, okay, so please tell me your thoughts in the comments. Okay, you should definitely check out my Simone Raja video if you enjoyed this video, because it's the same format with another amazing, gorgeous, glorious designer, so you can check that out right there if you want to. I also heard if you like the video, leave a comment, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. The next time you wanna emulate a designer, you, will already have the perfect item in your closet and you will not have to make an entire dress in an afternoon. Like you're just a little, I don't know. Oh, someone's using a very grating lawn tool. I'm just waiting for noises to stop around me, like the phone ringing. It's like, oh my God, the phone is ringing again? <laughs>